Hello Indie Game fans, welcome to the future. Next gen has become current gen and the potential that these systems have sure seems to be great. Still a little bit of a slow week, but as a result, smaller, weirder titles get a chance to stand out. But knowing people who watch this channel, do stick around since I believe that the number one pick will be of interest in this edition of Indie Gaming this week. Castle Grimholtz is a pixel art dark fantasy boss rush title that of course seems to be inspired by Dark Souls to some degree. As a fan of the art style, this looks gorgeous to me with some interesting details in the enemies with the areas here looking very claustrophobic adding to the challenge. If you're at all into Souls games, this is one to whet your appetite while waiting for larger games or perhaps in between sessions of Demon Souls on PS5. Another pixel art entry is Unreal Life, coming to us from a Japanese developer and looks pretty impressive due to the detail. This is a puzzle adventure game about a girl who lost her memories, having to solve puzzles while being aided by a talking traffic light as she seeks answers. There's something to these Japanese titles which make them feel very different from a western indie release so do give this a shot. If you're like me and a fan of the medieval sandbox puzzle game The Siege, then Diesel Punk Wars will be of interest. Similarly, this allows you to build your own vehicles on land, water and in the air where you need to customize and reinforce as necessary in order to complete the objective. There are over 300 elements that you can use in the construction, providing plenty of options and it does look like a very interesting physics based title. You have something for me? I expect a number of horrible deaths tonight. Uh-huh. I'm guessing that dress will cause a few of them. Now I know exactly who I'm up against. I'm just confident in my abilities. What do you think of me now, father? Nabbing citizens, fighting the cops, whatever this is, it's gonna be bad. For bigger games this week, we begin with Blood Rain 1 and 2 Terminal Cut being remastered for modern PCs but without that much work on assets and the like. 
If you're not familiar, the first game originally released in 2002 and was a mostly fine video game, but it did become a cult classic in some circles, so here it is in 2020. An Aryan race. Pure blood. Pristine. Well, good riddance to any full blood that lets a damn peer get the best of them. Because he murdered my mother's family. I've spent the last six decades finding and eliminating his. Physics-based bridge building games are one of my favourites, but it has gone in a very weird direction where bridge constructor The Walking Dead is perhaps the zeniest entry to date. On top of simply building bridges for vehicles to cross, you now have to build traps and hazards, having to take out the walkers while seemingly having to construct bridges for vehicles in certain levels as well. Given the IP that this is linked to, I have to include it under this section, but kudos to the team for experimenting with something really weird that could be really cool. One dark night, two toys were mysteriously brought to life. The Bubble Dragon Bub and the evil wizard Bunner. Join Bub and his friends as they brave a child's room at night on their quest to defeat Bunner. Finally, Bubble Bubble for Friends, The Baron is Back will try to bring the arcade classic into the modern age with revamped visuals but the same core action. There are now power-ups and special skills, but if that's too much for you, the arcade original is included as well. Equip and upgrade special skills. And master their mechanics. Includes the classic Bubble Bubble arcade game from 1986. The Baron is Back comes with lots of new stages. A completely new adventure awaits. Baron Von Blubber is invincible. To clear the stage, you'll need to avoid him while battling the other bullies. Clear these 100 new stages consecutively, just like in the original Bubble Bobble arcade game, and go for the high score. 200 puzzle pack stages await your bubble blowing bravery. Compete with players worldwide in the online ranking. You can also challenge the high score of the original Bubble Bobble. More players, much more fun. Enjoy local multiplayer with up to four players. Bubble Bobble for friends. The Baron is back. Will be released in autumn 2020 for PlayStation 4. I enjoy tower defense games, but they have trended in two directions: the fixed lanes of something like a Kingdom Rush or Gemcraft, or the freeform amazing type like Sanctum or X Morph Defense. But Reroad seems to have found a niche in that it allows you to dig and make the lanes yourself. It's an interesting change that I hope will be strategically viable with some nice modern visuals as well.
Vector Prospector self-described as an arcade action roguelite, and based on the visuals and inspirations, it does seem to nail that very thing. It is about exploring an underground cavern in your ship in order to collect gems, but it does look suitably challenging and well made. Kilta is a pixel art auto battler which looks promising, and I'm loving how the auto chess concept is already being adapted and used in other areas. Recruit a party of characters, arrange and place them strategically, and go forth and conquer. These management strategy games do remind me of simpler times in gaming, back to flash games, but I do love the modern pixel art of the characters and enemies. Smaller games this week kicks off with AT's Overdrive, a very retro arcade racer that will be sure to trigger more than a couple of nostalgic memories, making it to Steam after launching on Switch and surprisingly 3DS back in the day. The drawing sim title Art School also launches on Switch and is of interest because this developer has voluntarily removed his game from Steam, making itch.io the only other place that you can get it. Art School, the video game, coming to Nintendo Switch November 19th. Visit artschool.cool for more info. Ascent, not to be confused with the gorgeous action-adventure RPG, The Ascent, is a frustration platformer in the vein of getting over it, with the description stating, one mountain, zero checkpoints.
Azure Break Heroes is a neat, smaller action roguelite with a pleasant pixel art style, which I hope will be good. Come closer. A little bit closer. See the world like you never did before. A little bit lower again, there we are. Explore Honey Path and save your hive. Fly into a vast and colorful world. Vibrant, teeming with life, and full of little corners to explore. Bee Simulator makes it to Steam after being an Epic exclusive, so do check it out if you're curious, although it does sit at 65 on Metacritic. Don't forget, you have a mission. You need to collect pollen, defend the hive, and fight off invaders. You'll never be alone in your adventure. Your swarm will always be there. Join forces with your family and friends. Discover the world through the eyes of a bee. Have fun, explore, and learn. Embark on big adventures as a small bee. Bee Simulator, available now. Brawl Chess is basically chess, but it does have a wonderful cartoony look and could be interesting for kids. The cutesy local multiplayer title Kick Bash gets posited to Switch, having reviewed well, and this platform is perhaps the most natural fit for this game. Is your job getting you down? Do you feel trapped? Inside four walls. Step outside your comfort zone. Take a journey. Visit the frontier. The compelling mining title Cave Digger gets ported to Xbox One this week. Essentially, Steam will dig but in first person with nine different endings, which is of interest. It's a prison. There is so much to do in the frontier, like enjoying the fascinating scenery, meeting new friends, maybe having a lunch together, or drinks at the bar. While you're here, why not mine some valuables? You never know what you'll find. So, better keep mining. After all, it's what the legends foretold. And we wouldn't want to upset the legends now, would we? So, come to the frontier and never leave. The developers of Daikaiju Daikasen vs states that this is inspired by King of the Monsters and of course I'm down for some kaiju combat.
D-Light, The Journey Home is an episodic narrative game about a blind girl and a stray dog during a war and it looks like it's doing something clever with how it conveys blindness with new chapters being released every month or so. Depot Death Epileptic Pixel Origins is a first-person platformer that looks like a trip with over 50 levels, boss fights, mini-games and such, but strangely enough, it is currently delisted on Steam but still has a projected release date of this week. Jack, there should be a big cube lying nearby. Do you see it? The cube is activated. Dreamo is a pretty good smaller first-person puzzle game which released on Steam in February, with the Switch port being this week. You were in a plane crash. How did I get here? And where are you? There will be time for that later. What is this cube? I cannot say anything more about it, because it's part of your memories and you have to discover it by yourself. You may not believe me, but I want you to get out of here in one piece. Hang on, this doesn't feel right. Epidemic is a single-player base-building survival game where you play as a soldier using a hospital as a base to defend against a growing number of infected and looks to be quite similar to Zelda but much more grimdark. Kama Knight is a slick action platformer from Korea and gets ported to Switch this week.
Magia X is a Japanese-style RPG brawler with some slick-looking combat, a ton of numbers popping out, and some wonderful enemy aesthetics, releasing in early access which is only planned for a month, which is interesting. Ever so often, an idol game gets my attention and Melvor Idol takes that spot this week. On top of fishing, farming, cooking, crafting and so on, combat appears rather extensive as well and it looks as if something like RuneScape was converted into an idol game. The awesome pixel art roguelite RPG Star Renegade gets ported to Xbox One and Switch this week, with PS4 next week which I won't mention again, and I really liked it so check out my thoughts in the video covering the best indie games of September 2020. Super Buckyball Tournament preseason looks like Rocket League crossed with Overwatch and comes to us from Pathia Games, developer of My Time at Porsche. Super Cable Boy is an amazing looking retro platformer where you play as a handheld console with a power cord that seems to act as a grappling hook where a glitch in the system is the main antagonist. Parasite has grown out of control. It's hard to believe that it has come so far. Grab new weapons to carve a path through the Techno Parasite. I think that Synthetic Hazard is a student project which will be releasing for free and is a sci-fi roguelike first-person shooter that looks excellent, all things considered. The Techno Parasite keeps spreading further in the labs. We need to neutralize it before it compromises our situation. We are the lab's last line of defense. Don't forget it. Don't fail. Great shot! The connection lost. Reactivating pro. 
protocol. Let's start again. Developer Ezekiel Rage has appeared in a number of these videos since they appear to only make retro pixel art action platformers, with the Skylia Prophecy being the latest, which does look good and reminiscent of classic Castlevania. Into the home stretch with Underzone, a roguelite platformer where you pilot a mole mech and have to dive into the Underzone searching for survivors blasting enemies in your way. You say this is a rescue. Please remain calm. It adds procedurally generated enemies of all things, which is a twist on the roguelite formula so we'll see how it does and how early access goes for this. A humble original title that makes it to Steam is the oddly spelled Saizuji, and is a puzzle game where you're allowed to morph the tiles between squares, triangles, and hexagons, and seems hit scratching in all the right ways. Space Agency Simulator Mars Horizon does look fantastic and is one for space nerds since you are placed in control and have to do what you can to expand mankind's reach beyond the stars. There are base building and research aspects which look suitably deep, and this was made in collaboration with the European Space Agency which should ensure some sort of realistic interpretation of what these people are trying to do. An amazing surprise to me this week is Mystopia, a mini metroidvania using pixel art which looks really good. And in a surprising move, it's not coming to Steam, but it's on all other platforms. The inherent cuteness of a mouse has captured the hearts and minds of many, and this does look to follow in those footsteps. It is a relatively simple story where a great evil has captured all of the minds in the kingdom, so it is up to you to save the day. Always down for one of these, but I'll be waiting for the PC version, but nevertheless, this looks awesome, taking the number one spot.
To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.